Well, hey guys, welcome back to Wasting Time in the Woods and part two of our Iron Man 4x4 lift kit project. In the last video, we covered the broad strokes of the GX460 suspension. We talked about the options for lifting it and we covered why we chose Iron Man's Foam Cell Pro lift kit. In this episode, we'll cover the install and all of my hilariously pathetic mishaps that stretch this project to three freaking days. Yep, I completely botched this install and then fixed it just so I could point out all those potential pitfalls for you. Well, what are you waiting for? Go get your paint spattered jeans and a couple of beers. I'm gonna pretend to be mechanics for the next 15 minutes. I'm gonna go figure out which end of this you hit with a hammer. <clears throat> does, this, does this work like, I should probably figure out how this thing works. All right, now when it came to the install, things got a little, well, they got a little messy. Mistakes were made by both me and Iron Man. At first I was a little scared to tackle this project, but I kind of had to. Last year I did a video on everything that we had paid in maintenance on the GX, and I mentioned how much I had paid Toyota to do a bunch of stuff. You guys did not approve. I got a rash of shirt in the comments for that one. But you know what? You were right. If I'm gonna drag my family down 30 miles of blown out forest roads and make their lives completely dependent on me and the machine that I love, I should probably figure out how to fix that machine if it breaks. Now I'm not gonna go through the install step by step because Iron Man already has some great install videos, but the Iron Man videos either left out or got wrong a few things that pertain specifically to the premium 460. Now, as we go through this, it may seem at times like I'm just pointing out all the crap that Iron Man got wrong or left out in a petty attempt at retribution for all the issues that I ran into. Let's get started. The front install should have been easy. Unfortunately, it took me a whole day, even with Paul over to help. To get started on the front, you need to get all four tires up on the ground, open up the KDSS shutter valves, and disconnect the upper ball joint from the spindle. The first issue that we ran into were these little shock actuators. You have to remove them to get the old strut assembly out. Bracket right here is for the ABS shock system. I've disconnected it here. You don't have to do anything except disconnect this wire and then zip tie this up somewhere. But the problem is it has to come out through this little hole right here in the top of the strut now. But this bracket is like huge. There's no way that bracket's gonna come out. These are only on the premium versions because they change the shock valving when you switch it from mall crawler to Cadillac mode. Now, Iron Man covered these in the airbag delete kit video, but they're a little different on the 460. On the 460, they've got Allen head screws that hold the little actuators to the bracket. Mine were pretty seized up, so we resorted to needle nose vice grips once we had thoroughly stripped the sockets. Once those are out, you can remove the little black box, which will let you access the nut holding the rest of the bracket to the strut top. Once the actuators are gone, you can remove the strut top nuts on the tower and the lower shock bolt to get the struts out. The main reason the front took so long was a mistake we made. We decided to disconnect the sway bars from the lower control arms to get the struts in easier. The problem is that once you get the longer struts in, you can't reconnect the sway bar at full droop. Since there's no in-links on the GX's KDSS sway bar, it makes it really hard to bolt it back to the lower control arms. We actually had both new struts installed by lunch, but then we realized that we would never be able to get the sway bar reconnected with the new struts pushing the control arms an inch lower than they were before the lift. We ended up having to remove the struts, muscle the sway bar back into its brackets, and essentially start over. Finally, I resorted to calling Iron Man and they told us to shove a two x four between the frame and the lower control arms and bounce on it to get the strut in. Now I'm no engineer, but that was somewhat less precise of an approach that I imagine this particular project would require. But it worked. Would I do it their way again? Hell no. I'd follow the factory service manual, which calls for dropping the skids and pulling the sway bar completely before you remove the strut. I'd probably also loosen the lower control arm bolts to save the bushings. After the install, I noticed that my bushings were cracked and deformed a bit. Now, I'm not sure what kind of shape they were in before, but fisting my LCAs with a two x four probably didn't improve their condition. To get this shock jammed in here, and by the way, this is the two and a half inch lift, which is the smallest lift they sell for this vehicle. You need two fat ass friends. <laughs> you need two paws to do anything more than a two and a half inch lift. So their suggestion was that we jam wood 
between the A arm and the frame, which we did, which worked mostly. Paul still had to jump on it, but it went in. So what I'll say is do not remove the sway bar that cost us about two hours. Now the front end ended up taking us the whole day, but the back end, oh God. More mistakes were made by both me and Iron Man and then ended up taking me the rest of the weekend. The first big problem that I ran into was the airbag delete kit. Now, I'm not sure how it happened, but on the first day, one of the perches got foobarred. I think that the threaded part rolled off the table at some point and bounced on the floor because when I tried to assemble it later, the threads were essentially shot. To fix that, I had to take it to my father-in-law's house and file all the little tiny threads smooth again by hand. Fun! That took like an hour and a half. Look, I'm like the world's dumbest, poorest jeweler in that shot. Big shout out to my father-in-law, who's my tool rental house on most weekends. The next stupid mistake I made was taking two freaking hours to slowly wrench off a seized shock bolt. I have been trying to get this top shock mount off and I have had to go get the biggest pipe wrench that Lowe's had to put on this guy. And I've got a, I don't know, a two foot jack extension I'm using as a breaker bar. And it's going like an eighth of a turn, a quarter turn, an eighth of a turn. Now I realize that I could have just cut through the bolt and the bushing and that would have been done in a few minutes. I guess that I thought doing this for an hour and a half was a better idea. Speaking of shocks, look how much bigger these shocks are compared to the factory shocks. Rear shocks. It's the Iron Man's. Quite a bit beef here. All right, next it was time to get the airbags out. In the Iron Man video, the airbag delete kit used a 470. They talked about removing the airlines from the tank first, but the 460 doesn't actually have a tank. It has a valve block in the same location. You just need to remove these two little lines from the valve assembly box, which is under the spare tire. And the removal of the airbags is pretty much identical to the Iron Man video. All right, well, the top came out real easy. Just pulled this little retaining clip, this little retaining clip, just kind of reached up in there and found it and cling and then fished the, uh, uh, hose out with it, but I can't figure out how to get the bottom out. It's like mine's wedged in there. Pull on your bolts. Net. Uh, on the bottom. Now, I guess I should say why I went with springs in the first place back here. I've always wanted to leave the airbags in and either overinflate them a bit or build a spacer. I was even thinking about getting the extended airbag man bags from Australia at one point. But the conclusion that I came to is that all of the options are either less safe, less reliable, or less cost efficient than a pair of springs that will probably never fail. When I got my airbags out, I noticed that they were starting to dry rot a bit, so I'm pretty sure it was good timing anyways. Now the next problem I ran into was super, super annoying. They send you two sets of bolts for the lower spring perches in the airbag delete kit one set for the 470 and one completely useless set of bolts that they seem to think works for the 460. And I'm stuck because the bolts they give you for these things don't even clear the mount itself, which doesn't make sense to me. The long bolts are for a GX 470 and the short bolts are for a GX 460. The nuts and flat washers work with both sets of hardware. No, they don't, Wags. They're too short. They don't work. Now, these are about a quarter inch too long. There was another guy on I Hate Mud who mentioned the exact same issue, and they didn't seem to understand what I was talking about when I tried to explain this to them. So maybe they'll see this and finally get it fixed in their kits. Now, I was kind of confused when I saw the pan hard bar because they make another version with two bins in it, which they say is for KDSS vehicles. Now, when I asked, they told me that you can use either of them on a KDSS vehicle if you install the KDSS spacers, which is exactly what I did. After that, I got it all bolted back together and I ventured back out into the real world. Now, when I got the tires on it, wow, it was tall, like tall for American. You know what I'm saying? Like American tall. 
My initial afterlift measurements gave me three inches up front and nearly four inches in the rear. That was way, way more than I expected. Eventually, it settled down to where it is now, which is about two and a quarter in the front and three and a quarter in the rear. That is still way more than I expected in the rear. And since the front came in a little bit lower than advertised, it really exacerbated the rake instead of flattening it out. Now, when I asked Iron Man about this, they told me that only like three eighths of an inch of settling is expected. So I'm not sure why I got so much lift initially or why it settled so much in the front and so little in the rear. I've been on a bunch of trail runs since I put the lift in back in January, so I think it's fully settled. They actually make a set of springs that look like they would pair perfectly with the two and a half inch struts for a level lift. They list them as stock weight 1.5 inch springs. The problem is that they don't list them as an option in the kit and I didn't even know they existed until I already had these installed and my head got real itchy. Now I'm sure that they would have substituted them if I had known they existed but I just didn't. Iron Man recommended aligning it right away which I did. The first place I took it for an alignment sucked. They broke my cam tab and they couldn't get the caster very close to spec at all and it pulled to the left when I got it back. I took it to another shop that I trust and they were able to get the caster much closer to spec and fix the pulling but it still is a little out on the caster which makes it wander a bit more than it used to. I didn't get the upper control arms but I really wish that I had now. I need the lower control arms replaced soon anyway so I guess I'll just do them both at the same time and get another alignment. As far as performance, I couldn't be happier with Foam Cell Pros. We took it on a shakedown run through Kofa a few weeks after install and it performed beautifully. Everybody had a good time on that trip except for Chewy. Oh boy, Chewy's all choyed up. Bothering him. Stop, stop, stop. I'll get it. I'll get it, baby. Chewy. I'll get it. We've been on three or four trail runs and it is handled fantastic every time. It's slightly firmer on the street but way softer on the trail and the extended travel makes a huge difference soaking up all the bumps. Now, I asked Iron Man about rebuilding the shocks and I also noticed they recently started selling rebuild kits for the FCPs. When I searched the forums, I couldn't really find anybody that had one of these leak. Wags told me that the shocks only need to be rebuilt if they develop a leak and according to him, they haven't had any leaks yet. So they haven't had any customers request rebuilds. All right, so what did I learn on this whole escapade? Well, I learned that I should have started doing my own wrenching a long time ago. I also learned that advertised heights aren't always what they appear to be and don't take the sway bar off. Also, always have a copy of the factory service manual on hand. Next up, I think we'll do the control arms and I need to install a bunch of really cool ox beam lighting that they sent me. I may swap those rear springs out or maybe I'll just get a bumper and make my gas mileage even better. I really wish that I was working on camping videos for you guys, to be honest with you, but we're just too busy with end of the year kid stuff right now and I have been wrenching like crazy on the Forerunner, which I'll try to get edited sometime. I replaced all the suspension, ball joints, bushings, flushed all the fluids, did a radiator and brake reservoir replacement. Oh, and I did the valve covers on it too. Oh my God, and a tune-up. If I spend 300 more bucks at Toyota, I'm pretty sure I get a free Yaris. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you out there.